what, what else can you do? <coughs> what, can, what else can you do if you're solving the Navier-Stokes equation? What else can you do with this uh, velocity that you don't know? All the time. Let's assume for a moment that we don't have this, so we are solving a steady state problem. How would you proceed? Well, we can choose some arbitrary view for a start, then calculate it, and then replace, and repeat it a few times. Mm -hmm. It's close enough. Yeah, that's one guess. Uh, you can even start with zero velocity field. It's a very safe choice because it means that your first solution is like the solution of the Stokes problem. So very, very viscous flow. So you're really safe that it will be solved. Uh, exactly. And then with each next iteration, you replace the new, uh, the convection, convection velocity you replace it by the um, velocity solution from the previous time step. At the end of such a, uh, once it converges, well, actually this and that is arbitrarily close to each other, so you've got the proper solution. Um, what kind of other ideas you might have if it doesn't converge? We can start with uh, Laplace solution. You can, but the first, like I, I am pretty much sure the first iterations will be going fine with what, uh, with what Boyd proposed. Uh, what can you do? What kind of concerns do you see or threats? It it can be that this varies too quickly. One of the ways is to apply under relaxation. Under relaxation means that as you wave, you use, let's call it, let's assume we want to solve at the, uh, sorry, we want for a moment, sorry, for a moment. This one does not exist. Steady state. So let's assume we want to solve for the uh, some new iteration. Um, so the under relaxation means that you take the some portion of the velocity field from the previous solution times 1 minus alpha from the even earlier solution. Uh, where meaning that alpha is somewhere from 0 to 1. If you want to do under relaxation, where well, probably something like half, maybe 0 0.6, you need to experiment that. So you take just a fraction of the new solution and the previous solution, so this actually slows down, uh, it slows down the um, rate of evolution of your convection velocity, and it's, uh, in many ways, it's safer. Uh, you, you, you can expect having more stability uh, in the convergence rate. And, and, and finally, to have quicker convergence because if, in many cases, you apply under relaxation, because if you don't apply under relaxation, you get many, many oscillations in your, uh, in your, um, in your iterative process. So if you slow down the variation of the convective velocity, you may get eventually much quicker convergence than you would have without under relaxation. Some more questions? 
Are there any techniques to like take um, more solution steps from like fast? Because in optimization, I believe there are techniques that can take arbitrary number of solution steps from the fast and for so for for solving the uh, steady state Navier-Stokes. Well, you probably could, but I don't know such schemes okay. using more of them. Um, okay, now let's assume we deal with the unsteady problem. What, what's the, the naive way is obviously to... The naive way is to take the velocity field from the previous time step. What other solutions do you have? What kind of schemes can you come up with? Maybe something like practical sum. Meaning that? Uh, like, uh, do we assume that we have like some sub iterations? We could. Okay, so if we have like some iteration, we can uh, take maybe like half of uh, value from previous time step and half from of the new previous iteration. Okay, okay, that's one of the possibilities. So uh, I don't want to show you anything particular, but I want to just suggest to you with how many different ideas you can come up with. Um, the one idea is if we are, for example, if we are dealing with the unsteady solution and the unsteady problem, what we can do is obviously you can take from the previous iteration, from the previous time step, that's one of the solutions. If you've got a higher order scheme with respect to time, meaning that you don't only remember the previous time step, but you remember at least the, the second previous time step, then what people do here, you can apply something. Okay, you've got some time history. You know that this was work, this is your UN. This is UN minus one. What people also do is extrapolation to the new time step. Because what, well, if, it, if it behaves this way, probably extrapolation is some better guess and some better approximation than taking low order approximation from the previous time step. So you can either use the previous time step or use extrapolation to the new time step or as, uh, and like really such schemes that do not do any uh, um, sub iterations, they really exist. Uh, such schemes really exist, uh, but the other choice is what you mentioned. You can imagine having a time loop, time loop that updates the time step, and then you say, okay, mm, you say that I write the time derivative between the new time step and the current time step. Uh, and well, I don't have many choices. So at the beginning of calculating the new time step, I use the velocity field from the previous time step. Well, but I know it's wrong. So then I sub iterate. I do not know, I do not do the next time step. I simply sub iterate the nonlinearity for the new time step to have a well, well, correct value or at least a better value. Like it means that you do the one time step, but then you do like maybe five sub iterations to make these two things closer to each other. Then you make the next time step and so on. So, uh, so you can have sub iterations and then, well, you would probably have something like two indices because one denoting the time step and, and the other denoting the sub-iteration within the time step. 